Hi, it's Carrie. I'm the Research Impact and Health Professions Librarian at the Cook Library. In this video, I'll show you how to look at your research impact using a database called Scopus. Scopus is a proprietary subscription database that we have through the Cook Library. You can access Scopus by going to the Databases button on the far left of our website. I'll click on Databases, and then we can access Scopus by going to S or by typing Scopus in the search box. I'll click on Scopus, and here we are on the Scopus homepage. Now, Scopus is a very large, very multidisciplinary bibliographic literature database, but I would say it's more focused on the sciences, social sciences, medicine, and health, although you may find some other types of publications in Scopus. So that's the catch here, is that when we look at our researcher profile in Scopus, it's really limited to the literature that's been indexed in Scopus. So to look yourself up, you can navigate to the tab called Authors, and then enter your last name and your first name. And that's all you need to do, really. Then click Search. Now you may get a lot of people it's a good idea to look at some of them and make sure that there's not a duplication. If there is a duplication of your profile, you can write to Scopus and ask them to merge the records. But I see myself and I'm here at the top. Now to get to my dashboard, I need to click on my name. This isn't always super intuitive, but I'm just going to click on my name. And here we are on the Scopus dashboard for myself. You can look up yourself, you can look up other people. So what we see here is my name and my current affiliation. If you click on show all author info, you'll get a list of other previous affiliations and of subject areas. I'll click on show less author info, and then we see my Scopus identifier. That's a profile system that Scopus uses and assigned you a unique ID. And then we also see my ORCID integration here, so I do have an ORCID profile. Now if this is you, and you're signed into Scopus, you can create a free account in Scopus. You can edit your profile. You can also set an alert for yourself or someone else. Save to a list. Look for potential author matches. So again, if you thought there might be a duplication of your name somewhere else, you can look for that. And export to SciVal. That's a proprietary system that that we do not subscribe to currently at Towson University. Moving down into the next section on the left hand side, we see a metrics overview and it shows you how many documents are here that have me as a co-author. And we see that I've been cited 2,420 times by 2,341 documents. And then we see the H index and that's a measure of how many papers I have that have been cited at least n times. So that's saying that I have at least 15 papers that have been cited at least 15 times. And if you'd like, you can view the H graph, which will show you what that looks like. 15 papers cited 15 times. And on the left, I can see those papers and their citations which is something that I could further navigate in Scopus. So I could click on any one list of citations and explore those. But we won't do that today. We'll go back to my dashboard and continue to the middle of the page where we see document and citation trends. The lighter blue bars are a measure of your documents over time. And the darker blue dots are a measure of your citations over time. So you can explore those. And then we'll move to the right, and we'll see that from 2017 to 2021, these were the topics in which I published. So hearing aids and elderly, deglutition and swallowing, and urology. I can view all topics and see where my publications fall. Now, because I've been a medical librarian, you can see that my publications are very multidisciplinary. Yours will look a lot different. There are two more things in the dashboard. One is analyze author output, and the other is citation overview. 
So if I click on Analyze Author Output, we get a dashboard of visualizations that show me different things about my publications. So where they've been published. This shows you the journal names that I've been published in. And then we can expand by type and by year and by subject. So let me show you by type. And it just shows you that I have 18 documents that are articles, 20 that are review articles, I have a book chapter, and a letter. And we can scroll down again to look at some more metrics. I can see my co-authors, I can see my citations by year, and again, see my H index. So you can explore that. Let's go back to the author details page, and we'll click on citation overview, and we're going to see some of the same things here. So a citation overview, and I can exclude self-citations of selected authors, self-citations of all authors, citations from books. And for me, that doesn't really make much of a difference. So I excluded self-citations of selected author, me, and you can see that it really doesn't change anything. And then down here are the articles that are included and the number of citations for each year. Once again, we'll move back to the author details page. Now moving into the next section, which is a list of my documents, which I can export to a citation manager or save to a list if I have created a free account in Scopus. My citing documents. So these are documents that have cited my work. I have one preprint. I have 198 co-authors in 24 topics, which we saw up here on the right. And then they have an awarded grant section that's in beta. I think that will be really nice when it works, but you'll be able to see your awarded grants there. So I think this is a really useful tool for seeing your impact in your field or outside of your field, for finding your co-authors, potentially finding collaborators, for seeing who cited you, and more. Scopus is a really useful platform for this purpose. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the Cook Library YouTube channel.